Chris with Winemaker TV and today we will make uh, muscadine wine. Today we'll be uh, showing you, I'll be collecting some muscadines to make muscadine wine. It's uh, mid-September and the muscadines are ripe. Pick us some muscadines, gonna make us, I'm gonna start out with a gallon of uh, muscadine wine because I've never made it before. So I don't know if you can see or not, but we have a tree full, I mean a vine that's on these trees full of muscadines that are ripe. It is September 14th, 15th, 16th, something like that. Kind of lost track of time with uh, Irma and we lost a little power for a day. So uh, we're gonna pick these and gonna make some muscadine wine. Muscadines are a native grape of North America. They're really sweet and they'll get this deep purple color and And it had this little seed pot inside. We used to, <laughs> it's kind of like snot, but they're real juicy. So if you pick one, you see the eye where it's attached to the, attached to the limb, you just squeeze it and the juice comes right out. It's just delicious. In these low hanging fruit, and how am I gonna get all them? So I'm gonna give these limb a good shaking and then we'll pick them up off the ground. Uh, this I, I've been meaning for years to uh, tame this vine because I, I don't know if you can see but over here is the main trunk and it goes up through all these trees here and this this produces great grapes every year it's just hard to get to them I have to shake and shake and shake but this year you can see it's just got grapes everywhere so maybe we'll get us a good muscadine wine out of this this year let's hope funny how you change over time but I've been living in my where I live now basically nearly all my life and I <laughs> you can just shake these watch them come down <laughs> so we'll, we'll try to get as much as we can but I used to I fought these musky dimes all my life trying to get rid of them and now you just not knowing they just provide and I mean, I had great memories coming up when I was growing up, eating muscadines right off the vine. I don't know why, when we get to become grown-ups, we stop, stop being kids at heart. But, like I said, I used to have, we had a peach tree and these muscadine vines, and I always remember, have fond memories of being a child, eating peaches right off the vine, whoop, eating peaches right off the vine and eating muscadines every fall right off the vine i mean <laughs> kind of high up here ground's wet from what irma came through but uh, i have fond memories of eating peaches right off the tree <coughs> and uh excuse me and uh eating muscadines right off the vine there are plenty of them this year i don't think i've ever seen this many in one spot but i'm happy 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 <laughs> You see you give the vine a good shake and a lot of them just fall off. You pick them off the ground. You put them in your sack. And next thing we'll do is we'll press them and uh, put them in a carboy. Add a little sugar to them to increase the alcohol content a little bit. The recipe I saw added quite a bit of sugar, but I don't think I'll add as much as the recipe called for. We'll add some, and we'll have us some good old fashioned Georgia muscadine wine. Trunk of the vine, well, that's dead part, but here, and uh, grapes only grow every year on new growth. But there it goes. You can see, like I mentioned earlier, I fought them all my life. That's where I cut one years and years ago, but now I'm you know make great wine out of them here i picked my uh muscadine grapes i'm washing them off right now then we'll press them and then we'll put them into this one gallon demijohn and stopper goes right there then the airlock that's the only three things you need and have some muscadine wine all right i've added a cup of sugar to my one gallon demijohn and I'm going to use a, a red star premier blanc 
uh, yeast to get this stuff going. And to crush the grapes, I'm just going to use a, a sterilized uh, uh, mashed potato masher and just press them and then transfer them to the demi jar. Done pressing. Like I said, I'm going to shake it up, get the sugar, sugar mixed up in there. I thought it'd be more red, but this looks like it might be a white wine. I thought it might be red, but it, like I said, it wound up being being clear. We'll get all this shook up. We'll pitch the yeast, add the airlock, and then it's nothing but a waiting game then. We got some sediment in there, like some skin, so that'll add something to it. But when I rack it off to the secondary, we'll, we'll uh, filter all that out. In the yeast. We'll put the top back on it. Give it a little shake, just a little. I'll put the airlock on it, and then it should ferment for about a week and a half, two weeks, and then we're gonna let it age for quite a while. Fine wines age probably about a year, so. Uh, a lot of work got to be patient and this is Chris with Freedom Farm TV and that's all there is today